So uh, my husband and I made a video last night together about why we're doing what we're doing. And um, this, so last night I had a, kind of an epiphany. Um, I've been really tired lately and I've made a couple of videos that have referred to how tired I've been. And I have all these animals that I'm taking care of and I'm trying to make sure we don't have too little, but I think I'm kind of erring on the side of way too much. Um, what I'm kind of wanting to focus on right now is perennials because anything that I can grow this year that comes back again means I don't have to do all that work again. And in permaculture, that's what you do is you have all these perennials that protect your annuals and that aerate your soil and put nitrogen in your soil and good bacteria in your soil. And that's what your perennials do for you. They give you these microclimates that are beneficial for your annuals. Um, <clears throat> so we had kind of some, some setbacks this year with some of our things. Uh, with the ducks, she went broody too early. It's still quite cold. It, it freezes at night still. Um, and the temperatures, although the temperatures, we have had one day where it was up into the 70s. It's um, far enough into the age of the ducks, ducklings and chicks that she wants to be out moving around and it's still too cold for them to be out in the morning. And they're uh, all that's left now is the chick. Um, the ducklings because they hatched a week later, the, the dad duck didn't recognize them as his. He recognized the chick because it hatched first and he bonded to it really well and he's very protective of it. But he's protective of it against the ducklings because he, he just doesn't know that they're his. And so all the ducklings are dead. And what I would do different next year is I would leave the mom and dad together. I would really make be way more careful that there were not chick eggs in there because Again, the chicks hatch a week before the ducklings do because it so it it makes it so the mom stresses out because she can't leave the nest to go get this one food, and um, it confuses the daddy duck because he he just he's he he's not as in tune with the situation as the mom is as far as like whether or not the babies in the eggs are talking. Um, and then the other thing is I would take all of the eggs until June because it this morning when I went out to check on the animals, it was really, really cold. The chick was in distress because it needed to be under the mom still, but the mom knew that they needed to go eat. So she was out trying to forage and it was just way too cold. And the same thing happens with chickens. If you get a chicken that um, goes broody way too early or way too late, um, she'll take care of them for a while, but then uh, self-preservation and just, I don't know, what happens, but they just decide that they need to go eat. The chicks need to come eat and they're not going to sit on them anymore. And so the chicks freeze. Um, so this next year I would take the ducklings, um, away if they hatched really early and I would try really hard. Just, I would just, I would just take the eggs until June and then I would let her build up a nest and a clutch and let her, uh, let her set on them. Uh, let's see other things that would be good to know. Um, I'm going to work really hard. I'm going to try really hard to cut back on animals to the point where I am growing feed for the animals that I have rather than buying it. Um, it's kind of a new phase I'm going to try to go into is to cut it back until, because that way it keeps me from doing too many and getting worn out. If what I'm really focusing on is growing plants and kind of the animals are just kind of a subset of growing plants, then, um, I, I won't, instead of being limited by um, how much money I feel like pouring into these animals, I'll be limited by how much greenery I can grow for them and um, scrounge for them and stuff like that. So I think I'm going to try that and um, we'll see how it works. I, we, we had some really good days the last couple of days because I loaned uh, one of my goats to a friend of mine down the road because we just had more milk than I could even the even the pig could handle and yet I was still feeding them even though it was just going to the pig which means I don't haven't really had time to make cheese um, which is the whole point of why we have goats right is to do cheese and milk and butter and that kind of thing so I've cut down to milking two goats and I have one more that's due to kid in another month and one that's over at a friend so that if the one that's going to kid, if she turns out not to be a good goat, then I still have this other goat over at my friend's. 
and um, let's see. I've got more trees to plant, uh, especially the Siberian pea shrub. The Siberian pea shrub has been the only thing that's been able to make it and thrive in the poison pasture, and so I got more pea shrubs. What else did I do? Um, took some aspen and fruit trees from my neighbor next door, and um, if you're in the area, uh, my friend Summerlee has a business. It's called Springtime Nursery. And she has lots of the wild crafting permaculture types of trees and they're at an incredible price um so springtime nursery and um she's one of the ladies that i barter with to get some of my um trees and she's she has amazing skills like she does bees and geese and pigs and uh, she does everything and I, I don't know how she keeps up with it so um what else I think that's it for now. Everybody else is still alive and thriving and doing fine. The ducks, they just had a hard go of it. I, I would imagine that if the duck, if the chick dies, she'll just immediately start building a new nest and we'll start over. And hopefully this time it'll it'll turn out a little better. Anyway, there we go.